In this video, I will be giving an overview of the Ball Beam project by Team Balls and Beam, consisting of group members Corey Adler, Andrew Biss, Dom Maffa, and Brad Smith. To demonstrate what they've learned in class, the group was tasked with building a ball beam system. This ball beam system consists of a 12-inch long beam, also known as a track, that is mounted to a base and is able to freely pivot about an axis. This beam has a linear potentiometer on it that is able to track the location of a ball on a track. To change the desired location of the ball, a user turns the potentiometer, which relays the input to the PID controller, and moves the ball to the desired location. The first thing the group did was create a block diagram to better understand how the PID controller would work. The block diagram shown now is a simplified version of the physical model and does not include any of the inaccuracies you'd normally see in a system, such as friction. It contains a step function as the reference, RT, which represents the potentiometer input with values from 0 to 12 inches. This is used with the current position of the ball, or XT, to calculate the error, E. This error is fed into the PID control block. Inside this PID block are three K values representing the proportional, integral, and differential control, which have values of 4, 2, and 4, respectively. The output of this PID block is the angle the beam is to be turned to. The model assumes that the PID control of the Arduino is directly outputting the beam angles to the plant and ignores the relationship between the servo angles and the beam angle. To assist with deriving a transfer function, the group used a paper that is referenced at the end of this video. The output of the transfer function is the expected position of the ball, which gets added to a step disturbance, dt. The disturbance is modeled as a forced change in position of the ball. For example, a value of negative 2 would be pushing the ball 2 inches in the negative direction. This is why the disturbance is placed after the plant, because if it was placed before the plant, then it would mean the disturbance is change in the angle of the beam. After this summation, the output is the ball's actual position, xt, which is sent to the scope and back to the beginning as feedback. This governing equation was derived in order to find the transfer function. Here, x double dot is the acceleration, m is the mass of the ball, r is the radius of the ball, i is the moment of inertia of the ball, and theta is the angle of the beam. Using Laplace transform and the small angle theorem, the new transfer function was derived. Substituting for values of the mass and radius of the ball, the final transfer function can be achieved. The limitations of this approach include the small angle theorem, because in reality, the angles are not small enough for this assumption to be very accurate, but this assumption greatly simplifies the analysis. Another limitation of the analysis would be that the change in the beam angle is instantaneous in the simulation, whereas in reality, it takes a short time for the servo to the group's PID control was coded in Arduino, which is based on the C programming language. This code was uploaded to an Arduino Uno, which had the capacity to read the input from the soft potentiometer and rotational potentiometer and output power and control to a servo. In order to properly program the Arduino, first the group worked out a process using mathematical equations, then converted those equations to one the Arduino could understand. The end goal of the equations is to get a u-value. You could think of this u-value as a sort of combination of the proportional integral and derivative gain. The first value is the proportional error and is the only system output. Each of the other values are calculated using this value and the previous values. Proportional error can also be thought of as a system error. For example, if the ball should be balanced at 9 inches and is currently at 6 inches, the system error would be 3. The second value is the derivative, which is the rate at which the error is changing. If the ball is not moving, the derivative error is 0, but once the ball begins to roll towards the target location, it will become negative. If the ball is rolling away from the target location, it is positive. This means that if the ball starts with a large proportional error and the system adjusts by tilting the meme at some angle, as the ball rolls towards a new steady state value, the U value will drop as the negative differential error grows with the increasing speed of the ball. The last value is the integral error, which is accumulation of error once the ball is near steady state. With each time step, the integral error will either grow or shrink and is most significant when both proportional and differential error are near zero. For example, if the ball sits at 0.1 inches from the desired location, the proportional error will be 0.1 and the differential error will be zero, meaning it will sit there forever, but as it sits off center, the integral error slowly grows, slowly increasing u until the angle changes and the ball rolls slowly towards the exact center. These three values are combined into a single variable, u. 
This U value can either be positive or negative and is added to the steady state angle for the beam. The steady state value for the beam describes the angle at which the ball would not roll when on the beam. When the U value is not zero, the ball will be disturbed from steady state and the ball will roll towards the new desired location. Smooth the operation of our ball beam. Once the arrow was less than 0.5 inches, it would be rounded to zero so that the ball would sit at a steady state. Lastly, the U value is combined with the horizontal beam angle and if it is non-zero, it will tilt the beam to minimize the error. For the ball beam to be successful, a lot of thought had to go into the construction. The group decided to make their beam larger than 12 inches and have part of the beam extend past the pivot point to act as a counterbalance and lessen the load on the servo. The group used laser cut acrylic for the construction of the beam. This beam would be attached to the base by a piece of aluminum that was water jet to size. The holes in the aluminum were drilled after the water jet to ensure accuracy. The base of the system was made out of a solid piece of wood to ensure stability and dampen any vibrations and movement. The servo was held in place by a 3D printed mounting mechanism. The group used CAD software to perform tolerance checks and ensure a proper fit. Unfortunately, the group was not able to get a clear picture of their system before they had to leave campus. Overall, our ball beam project was successful. The model was able to take an input from the linear potentiometer to accurately determine where the ball was and was able to use a feedback loop to adjust the position of the servo to manipulate the ball to the position specified on the dial. The system was quick and accurate in its movements and was always able to return the ball to a steady state value in under 10 seconds. The system had a low overshoot of under 2 inches when moving the ball to a new position. The PID control using an Arduino determined the ball was in steady state at the position when the location was seen as being within 0.05 inches of the desired position. Although, although the group project worked, there were some changes the group would make for next time. For one, the group could have spent more time in the tuning process so the ball could get to its desired position in a shorter amount of time. The group also had a faulty ribbon potentiometer and had to use a shorter one as a result. To fix this, the group should have looked into buying a new ribbon sooner. Although the group was able to get their beam to be fully operational, due to circumstances beyond their control, they were not able to get a video of the beam in operation before the school was closed for the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you.